Home is supposed to be where the heart is, but going home to Kansas City wasn't all it was cracked up to be. The discomfort didn't come back in waves. It hit me the moment I stepped off the train. The confusion of joy and angst mingling together in my stomach. My heart moved twice as fast and my feet followed its lead. I was ecstatic to reunite with my love and my kids. But every fiber of my being knew that even the most golden moments in Kansas City happened on borrowed time. something heavily planned to being basically an enigma. You don't really know what you're doing or where you're headed. As far as I can remember growing up, everyone else made it seem like life is just this easily planned, predictable thing. A lot of times they made it seem like you kind of figured it all out starting in high school. This predictable process, this surefire way, if you made the right choices, you would be on a path and a trajectory working towards completing the plan that you have in your mind. But it's not that simple because life isn't predictable. I have not kept this a secret. I don't necessarily want to live in Kansas City. We've tried to move out of state twice. As someone who grew up here, as much as there's good things here at the same time, there are some things that really turn me off. You know, when I first wanted to leave, I was engaged, finishing up school, expecting, fully expecting to move away. And now, <laughs> I'm still here. How is this all affecting me as I grow and I change? Not even just since college, but even just since we bought this house. So much has drastically changed in me. I would just be lying if I said that I am totally satisfied being here. I wasn't truly satisfied. From as early as I can remember, I was desperate for a life of inconsistency a life of color and imperfection and grandeur. Though culture and family wanted to steer me in the direction of security and stability, I craved unconventionality. At some point in my life though, I learned it's better to swim among the fish than to swim upstream alone. I let go of my creative passions to have a life that looked good on paper. I tried my best to keep up a facade that I too craved a cookie cutter, picture perfect life with a nice house and the job title that makes eyes glitter. But you can only chase someone else's dreams for so long until your own fade away. I'm not sure if I fully reclaimed the girl I once was, the girl I buried deep inside of me, the one I silenced over and over in order to be what others wanted me to be. But something about taking time off and running away to Chicago allowed her to resurface. It was like the city invited me to breathe again, to be again. What I thought would cause panic only set my soul free. Coming home was the real challenge. Everyone I loved was there, but it was like we were all out of place, as if Kansas City was past its expiration date, but we chose to leave it in the cupboard anyway. We were indifferent and complacent, so comfortable, we refused to take it off the shelf and throw it out, but not comfortable enough to consume it down to the crumbs. One step forward, two steps backwards, yeah. And much your lover who don't use big words, yeah. Because I know what I want Baby, 
impactful Chicago was for me. It was very subconscious, very subtle. It evoked so much meaning in my heart, my soul. And being here immediately felt like a downer. Like I love my family. I really love my family. I love my husband and my kids. They're fantastic. And I actually really enjoy our house. It's not even that. It's what feels off is there's a lot of history and a lot of pain and a lot of frustration. As I've grown and worked on healing my heart, I've discovered it's not easy for me to see Kansas City without seeing those things as well. That doesn't mean that the good times don't matter. I almost feel like my perception is not fixable. And I mean, that isn't really the goal, to fix my perception. That's not the goal. But I have wondered, is there a chance to reclaim, to redeem? And I think over time, the more I access my true self, the more I listen to her true thoughts, her true emotions, and lean into the things she truly loves, the more I realize being here doesn't fully serve me and that's okay. That doesn't mean I'm rushing to leave. I'm not trying to move tomorrow. <laughs> Obviously there are checks and balances and there's a time frame. but my husband and I have been on this trajectory, wanting to go and not going, wanting to move and not moving. Even when I was leaving college, I did not plan on coming back. <laughs> Today, more than ever, I just realized how much I really need to listen to my gut. I'm an INFJ and I've spent too much time betraying my gut and my intuition and lean into that. And when things shift, they will shift. While I know the shift is coming now, I want to enjoy. I want to find golden moments as often as possible. Kansas City isn't awful, but I think personally, I just don't fit. It doesn't fit anymore. And I want to end it on a high note so that when it's time to transition to the next place, I don't want to waste time. The girl that moved back home in April of 2016 wouldn't recognize herself today. That girl was afraid and angry and aspired to have a life people envied, people were intrigued by. She easily let people trick her into feeling ashamed and unaware. She stressed out at the slightest changes and silenced herself when conflict felt like it was too much to bear. The woman she became is a wiser version of her child self, creative without limits, open to nuance, willing to live an uncontrollable life. She might have trauma and baggage and wounds to heal, but she doesn't let those things arrest her from a full life anymore. This woman finds beauty in imperfection. She snacks on pretzels void of salt, popcorn drenched in salt, and sips on lukewarm Sierra mist, all while sitting in mismatched chairs beside her husband. She taps her feet to the beat of modern funk on sticky floors mopped with more soap than water. She haphazardly stows away her ego as she laces up her roller skates, making a fool of herself in front of dozens of people as she tilts and tumbles on the skating rink floor. She embraces new ideas and new themes, trying new things out for the first time, taking risks, even when she felt uncomfortable. She is brave, resilient, and willing to learn on the go. She is me and I and becoming more and more impressed with her every single day. Mm -hmm.